what is going on YouTube, Prepared Wander in the Man Cave today, and going to talk about a subject that has been talked to to death. This horse has been beaten to death on the internet, through YouTube, through forums, through uh, Facebook groups, whatever. Um, it is a subject that people are fascinated with, and they love to watch videos about it, they love to talk about it, they love to debate it. And I figured why not, I'm going to jump in and I have some thoughts on it. I've been really reassessing how I think about this whole subject matter. So we're going to jump into it today. And what is what we're going to talk about is bug out bags and exactly what I put together. And hopefully it'll give you some ideas um, and I'll show you how kind of what I'm thinking, what my, uh, what my perception of a bug out bag is. And then you guys can comment below what you would add or take away or you know tell me I'm just full of crap. It doesn't really matter. It's it's a point of discussion and that way um, get you guys thinking a little bit. So stick around, it's gonna be an interesting video. You know, when we talk about bug out bags or when I'm viewing bug out bag videos, I've noticed that there's a lot of variety. Um, they're all over the place as far as size, contents, what people think they're going to use them for. So it's really got me thinking and I watched a couple of videos here recently from a couple of different people that really um, for whatever reason hit home with me and made me start thinking a little bit more about the subject matter. And I've been pondering it all week just thinking about it. Um, what would I do? What have I done in the past? What have I done wrong? What can I do better? And I think, I feel that I have zeroed in on something that's a little bit more manageable to my lifestyle and that's going to fit my needs. And that's what it's really all about. <clears throat> the bug out bag that you come up with really needs to be something that fits how you live and how you intend on using it. And, you know, how I do it may not fit how you do it, but hopefully this will resonate with somebody and they'll go oh yeah that's I like that I can I can duplicate that um, I can put that together pretty easily and this will help you so that's the intent of the video um, it's an interesting subject matter for sure um, if you go out and search uh, Google for bug out bag you will see tons of bug out bags that are, are pre-packaged put together by companies what they think that you need and most of them that I've seen are very inadequate. <clears throat> They're pretty much junk. Um, a lot of the videos that I see on YouTube for bug out bags tend to be overpacked with stuff, too much stuff. They've taken the concept maybe a step further than it needs to be. So what I've done is I've dialed that concept back a little bit <clears throat> and I'm really thinking about it. How am I going to use this thing and how do I want to use it? And uh, the one thing that I I keep coming back to is that I need to be realistic what I can do with a bug out bag because at my age and my physical condition currently um, it will be difficult for me to hike 25 miles in a day I'm not gonna be able I'm not gonna lie uh, you know I'm trying to get my physical um, capabilities up right now I'm definitely working out more walking more I'm trying to eat better trying to get myself in better shape and that's a key component to this whole thing. Um, but I need I needed a, a bug out bag that was really very realistic. I've done videos in the past on bug out bags, and I think they've been kind of all over the place and not really that well thought out. And I think I was just trying to maybe jump on the bandwagon, thinking that since I have a preparedness channel, that I need to have a bug out bag video. Well. I do need to have a bug out bag video, but it needs to be well thought out. And what, what I've come up with is something that I consider to be compact and lighter weight. Now, lightweight is relative. That's a relative term to most people. Um, my lightweight is not your lightweight. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. But this thing certainly is not an ultra light bag by any stretch of the imagination. You're not going to hike the AT with this. Um, but it is compact enough that I feel like I can grab it and go and do what I need to do and I don't feel hindered by it. I can take it with me when I want to go places. So let's get into the bag. Let's see what I packed. Let's talk about uh, the size of it and hopefully give you guys some ideas. I think the thing that um, I like about this particular bag is the size of it. It is not too small. It's not too big. 
Um, you can hold enough gear to do an overnight out of it, um, but it's not so big that you're gonna, you're gonna pack tons of extra stuff that you don't need. And that's the whole point. This bag needs to be um, able to be able to get out in the woods quickly and to sustain me for two or three days out in the woods. Now, I think this comes in at 27 liters, about 1600 cubic inches. This is the 3V Gear VLOX 2. Um, this is a bag that VLOX or the 3V Gear sent me um, about a year ago, and I've been running it um, in a lot of different ways. I've taken it out hiking, bushcrafting, camping. I've used it as a travel bag through airports. And it's held up really well, and I like the organization. It's it's organized, but it's not overly organized. Um, so let's just start going through the contents, and I'll talk a little bit about each content and how why I think uh, they're geared towards uh, being a bug out bag. Now, the first thing we have is we have this top pocket and in here. I have my Sawyer Mini. I've got the um, uh, the bag that goes with it and the straw and I've also got the flush um, syringe um, I carry the syringe because it helps flush of course and, and maintain the the um, filter but also I can use this as irrigation for a wound it's a really handy kind of item to have it, it's very lightweight it's kind of bulky um, but it's not bad so that goes in the top pocket The Sawyer lasts a long time. I can get a lot out of it. Uh, next thing is is some uh, duct tape on an old credit card. Always good to have some duct tape. And this, of course, is um, Gorilla Tape. I, I prefer Gorilla Tape over regular duct tape. I think it works pretty well. And then I have my headlamp, which is the Olight. Uh, let's see what model this is. This is the H... H1R Nova. Um, it's a nice rechargeable light, but also it takes a CR123, so I have a spare battery for that in, in my bag. Um, very lightweight. Um, it has a lot of different functions as far as low light to high light uh, to very bright light, and that's what I like about it. It's not too bulky. Um, it's just a nice, nice headlamp. And we're going to go down here to this pocket. This is kind of the admin pocket. And you see, I got a lot of stuff in here. I got an oversized bandana. So, of course, a cotton bandana serves many purposes uh, wiping sweat, cleaning dishes. You can turn this, this is big enough, you can turn it into a sling. Um, I can cut this up and use this as char cloth and make char cloth with it. So, that's a combustion um, portion of my kit. Uh, I think it's vital to have some kind of eating utensil. I can carve one, but why am I going to take the time to do that in the field when I have something that's lightweight? This is this um, light my fire spork in titanium, so it's very lightweight. Then we have my dedicated fixed blade knife, which is the SE Knives 3. Very capable blade, um, probably more capable than most people would think. Uh, it's a great fixed blade. I've had this for a very long time. I've used it in a lot of different conditions. It's always held up well. It sharpens easily. It, take, it holds an edge nicely. Um, I've got it in an aftermarket Kydex sheath, and I've got it set up as a neck rig, so I can carry this around my neck underneath my clothes, so it's kind of inconspicuous. Um, the three-inch blade, uh, I think, uh, it's a little bit more than three inches, I believe, um, is just enough... Uh, to use. I don't think I need much more than that and it'll it'll handle most tasks. Then we get into a pair of Gerber multipliers, multi-tool. Got to have a multi-tool. I think that's really important. Um, I've got a Gerber tactical pen. This has a dedicated, dedicated glass breaker in it right there. I've done a review of this pen before. So just a handy item to have in my pack in case I come upon something that I need to, to break into. Now you gotta think about this pack is not just wilderness. This is, this is transitioning from 
uh, urban, suburban, to a uh, country, and then eventually into wilderness. So I need to have the pack be able to handle all those different um, those different terrains and different types of environments. And I've got my notebook, right and rain notebook with some grid readers, a, a right and rain pen, and this is going to be for land navigation. This also has a signal mirror. and a Fresno lens. So the Fresno lens I can use for fire starting as well, so it's a multi-purpose item. Then I've got a good base plate compass. This is a Silver Ranger. This is one of the old Rangers when they're still being made, um, I believe in Sweden um, or Finland, I can't remember which one. Uh, the newer ones are being made in China and are, are junk, so stay away from those, but the old Silver Rangers are great. Had this one for many years, used it in search and rescue training quite a bit, and it served me very well, and it's still in excellent condition. I'd like to take care of my gear as much as possible. So that's it for the front pocket. We go in here. And this is a middle pocket that divides these two front pockets to the main pack of the body of the pack. So it only goes about halfway. I've got some food rations in here. These are just basically cliff bars and cliff shots. This is some quick energy food. I have an all-weather blanket. Now this can be used part of my shelter system. This can be used on the ground. I can wrap up in this. I could use this as a tarp on its own. So a lot of different variations of how I can use this, but um, primarily I'm using this as a ground cloth to my shelter system. And I'll show you what else I have for my shelter system. And I have some tent stakes, so I don't have to bother carving or whittling anything out of nature. I can I can spend that time setting up my campsite very quickly. Probably one of the most important tools that you can have for wood processing is a good saw. Of course, this is the Silky Gomboy. Just the right size for this pack. Um, I don't need anything bigger than this. Um, anything smaller, I think, um, is going to be difficult to work with. This can cut some de decent sized firewood for me in the evening. So, really a great tool to have. It's well worth the investing in a good sharp well thought out saw and the silky gone boy is it and of course every bug out bag should have a good pair of work gloves you are going to be building shelters you might be procuring food you may get cold uh, you want to protect your hands and a good pair of gloves will do that okay now we're going to go into the main body of the pack What's nice about this pack is, if you open it all the way, it will clamshell completely open. Now you can really see the contents of your bag and it makes it a little bit easier to pack. So what I have in here is, I have a continuation of my shelter system. I have a Bushcraft Outfitters Mest Tarp or poncho. So this is a poncho or it can be turned into a dedicated tarp. Either one. Um, so it's multi-purpose. Really a great item to have. Um, it's very well made. It fits me well and it keeps me dry. Part of that shelter system of course is going to be some 550 cord. Uh, multiple uses for this. Got to have some. Another thing I like to pack is some contractor bags. These contractor bags, of course, can be used as a mattress. If you fill them with leaves, you can turn them into a poncho on their own. You can put your bag inside of it if you need to do a river crossing. Multiple, multiple uses. Um, always have a few in my bag, and I think um, it's just a, it's a great all-purpose item. It's very lightweight, so you might as well put it in there. Also part of my shelter system is a military-grade Whoopie or um, poncho liner. 
very lightweight, a uh, great thing to to wrap up in in the middle of the night. And I don't need a bag for it, I can just shove that in the bottom of my pack and that fills up all the extra voids and spaces in my backpack. Then we get into first aid. First aid's important. Um, I'm currently looking for and wanting to get a different uh, pouch uh, for my first aid kit. I haven't found anything I like yet, and I want to attach to the side of my pack so it's the outside of my pack. That way it gives me more room in here. But what I have this broken into, broken down into, is to two different types of first aid kits. This is the Boo Boo kit. This, of course, has chapstick and um, band-aids and there's uh, tweezers for removing ticks there's a tick identification card you see that that's important um, some uh, gauze pads different things like that there's some advil in here so this has all the little medications and, and uh, first aid items that you need to take care of yourself the second pouch is dedicated to more trauma type items. So I've got some combat gauze, quick clot, I've got gloves, I got tape, I've got my um, uh, tourniquet, I got some uh, a big gauze pack that I can um, wrap a wound in. So I'm I'm prepared for something that's a little bit more than just a cut or a scrape. Now, part of the, the deal is you need to be able to boil water, and having a dedicated metal pot to cook in, to boil water in, to even make char cloth in, is really important. And one of the best little pots I found is the Snow Peak 750. You can see it's definitely been used on the fire. And inside there, I've got coffee packets, I got cream, I got sugar. Those are morale boosters. So if you're out cold and hiking and you need something to pick you up for the day, this is going to be it. I think it's really important to have some coffee with you. I so many of the bug out bags I see are all on emergency rations. And they don't have any kind of um, morale boosters, and I think coffee is a big one. And it's you know they weigh so little, they're so so small that you can pack a few inside your cup. So why not take them? So I've got my metal cup. So now I can boil water, disinfect it. I can cook food. I can make coffee. Really important. And then on the outside of the pack over here on the side, I have a metal container to boil water in as well. And this is my SOS Outdoors uh, water bottle. And this will this will hold up to a lot. Um, you know, I can boil water with this. Uh, it's just, you know, a metal container is great. And I think a, a metal water bottle is the way to go. So we've got that. And then, Last but not least is probably one of the most important aspects of this kit is the fire kit. And the fire kit um, has a lot of redundancy built into it, uh, but I think it's really important that I have the ability to start a fire because the fire um, not only cooks food or disinfects water, um, it's also a morale booster, but it also helps thermal regulate my temperature. So if I am cold, I am wet, I can get dried out quickly. So having different ways of starting a fire is really important. First way is with a petroleum jelly on a cotton ball. This is stuffed full of cotton balls that have been soaked in petroleum jelly. A dedicate, these are a great quick fire starter. They last a long time and they get a fire going fast. Next, we have a piece of fat, uh, fat wood. Always good to have a piece of fat wood. Doesn't weigh a lot. Might as well throw that in your pack, right? A couple big lighters. Always like to have a backup, so I always take two with me. Next is a, some cordage. Uh, this is jute twine, so I can fluff, fluff this up and make this into a bird's nest um, if I'm starting a fire or I can use it to tie stuff up with too, so it's it's double double purpose. Um, got some of this fire tape. Uh, you take a little portion of this and you kind of scrape it up with your knife and it starts to fire very quickly. I've done a review on this before. Works really well, very lightweight. So just a, another dedicated fire starter to throw in the pack. And then a good fire steel. 
something that sparks very easily. This one has a magnesium block built into it and also the wood handle can be scraped for shavings um, in itself. So a uh, multi-purpose item, gotta have a fire rod. And then last but not least is um, a really handy little item that uh, I love um, is this pocket bellows. This thing, if you have a marginal fire and it's having a tough time getting going in weather, uh, you pull this out and it, you can stoke a fire very quickly. Uh, this thing will do a phenomenal job. And uh, you can make this one, you can make this if you want to out of a car antenna. Um, but I found that the, the, the pocket bellows as is that I got from Five Call Survival, Survival Supply, um, you know, stores down into a nice small package. So why not? So there it is. That's everything. Not a ton of stuff, but um, lightweight enough that you're not going to not want to carry it. Um, All right, that's it for the video for today. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, like I said before, this is my philosophy. This is what I'm taking with me in a bug out bag. And that means, what does a bug out bag mean? It's not leaving home forever. It's not fighting the zombie apocalypse. It's nothing stupid like that. It is... An emergency has happened at home. I can't be in my house anymore. I need to grab a few things. I'm going to grab this bag. It's going to be one of the first things I grab. And then I'll probably also then pack a real quick clothing bag um, and probably take a firearm with me as well and a couple, a few important items that are in my house that are important to me. And that's it. I'm, me and my wife are hitting the car and taking off. But I want to have this bag with me because if we have to hoof it, um, um, in an urban or wooded area, there's going to be things that I need. There's going to be tools that I need. There's going to be things I need to keep me warm. There's going to be food that I need. And this kit will at least get me there um, to the next point. And that's the whole, that's the whole thing about this is you just want to get from point A to point B and do it comfortably. Um, taking a gigantic backpack that's filled with all kinds of camping gear, you're just not going to want to carry it. It's going to be cumbersome. It's going to take you a lot longer to get where you need to go. This way I can stay light and mobile. Um, and I think, um, you know, this lesson I'm, I've learned has come from a lot of different sources, from the military, uh, from other YouTubers. Um, so I, there's a lot of information out there. You just got to kind of, you kind of wade through all that bullshit and figure out what is perfect for you. For me, this works. I think this is going to work perfectly. And I'm really excited to have this all packed up and ready to go for this year. And I'm going to do my best to uh, continually use it, test it, and keep it with me um, wherever I go so I have this pack uh, at the ready. Um, I think it's definitely going to meet my needs. So, um, as always, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next time on Paragon.